Hello. Good morning, everybody. This is Jacqueline with Cowbell Farms. And I just wanted to do a quick little walkthrough of the farm so that you can see now it's winter and nothing's really growing. So we will just see. But this way you can kind of get a little bit of a glimpse and meet everybody on the farm. See you in a minute. Here we are at the chicken coop. We're gonna let these little guys out to have a heyday today so they can play. We'll give them a little feed while we're over here. This is like a high organic layer and they love it. Eat it up girls and Roger. Funny story about Roger is I named him Roger because most likely every rooster I've had at some point ends up being a little more aggressive. So Dodge and Roger, Roger Dodger, that's what I call him. <laughs> Only he's not dodging me most of the time, but so far he's good and doesn't attack anybody. So we'll hope that he stays that way. I'll take a little walk over here to the orchard. You hear the girls hollering from the barn. This is where all the future grapes and muscadines are gonna be on these trellises. And this whole area back here in this back is gonna be a food forest that we're working on getting, excuse me. This is my raspberry trellis that I'm working on getting established. I planted raspberries last spring. Only a lot of the bare roots that I have bought did not grow. They just died in the ground. So I'm working on trying to get my money back. These are the blackberries coming in. Very, very good. A couple of different varieties. So we will have all of those. Look at these mamma jammas right here. These are the birdhouse gourds that I planted. And there's a lot of those. They're actually so heavy that they are pulling the trellis off of the T-post because they weigh so much. Or one little lonesome little fig tree back here. I guess I need to get, get it a friend. And here is the blueberries. Blueberry bushes. I plan to put a good bit more in here. And I'm also thinking of taking this fence that's here and pushing it back to expand the orchard a little bit, but we'll see how that goes. Sorry about the lighting. It's my Granny Smith apple tree and my other apple trees. We have pears. We have little tiny plum trees. And of course, there's the house and the pool in the background. These girls want to meet y'all. Hey girls. Hey. You want to meet everybody? Say hey. Super interested in whatever I have in my hands. Especially Jazz. Oh, Jazz, back up. I also brought some bread out here. So I can give them some of that. There you go. It's a little windy, so I don't know if you can hear that in the background. I'm trying to get in some better lighting. And we have to harvest all of these walnuts. They are everywhere. And really, you will fall down if you're not careful when watching where you're going. This is the goat barn. Here's 
their little outside area. The old goat barn from when I first started and my future smokehouse right there once it's cleaned up. This is my nice barn that we built about, I want to say three years ago. So we'll take a little look inside. Storage for feed. This, the hay is right here for now. But this is my milking station where I do the milking of the goats. And we have old freezers and garbage cans because you have to keep all your feed in there or the mice just go crazy. But this is the winter area for the goats. They only get to come inside in the winter because that's a lot of cleaning to keep them in stalls instead of keeping them out in the stalls that are outside. So makes it a little easier. There's Willow. Hey, girl. Hi, pretty girl. Here's all the... <laughs> Hi, guys. Hi, Doug. Hi. Hi, Willow. That's Frankie. And that's Aspen. She's new. This is one of my little gardens. This is my, I call it my beachy garden around my swimming pool with my, I want you to see the size of this banana tree. That thing, I only planted it in the spring, but it rained so much this year that I've never had one that big. These have literally been here for three years and this one was just planted. So that one's like super monster. Sorry about some shadowing. Here's my little privacy fence along the pool deck. Let's walk out here to the big garden. Oh, <laughs> I almost fell over Aspen. She just tried to trip me. Sorry about the longevity of this. We have elderberry trees coming up, bushes, whatever you want to call them, coming in right here that we just planted. So we have a little flower garden here, the greenhouse, and our raised bed garden. So you can get kind of a look at what's going on in here. And yes, the sun is very bright. We have so much that we're gonna do and like out here, right across in here, down through there, I wanna put some cattle panels in arches to plant green beans on. And I have a medical herb garden right out, right there. And right now, this is what we're working on, building a lean-to for the greenhouse so that I have some shade to get into because when you're out here in the summer and it's early in the morning, it gets hot by probably eight o'clock. It's already blazing hot here in Alabama. It gets hot quick and there's no sun. This is where our tomatoes were this year. And we are about to tear all of this down and we are going to build a wooden place to grow all the tomatoes and trellis them up. This worked great, but it was kind of like last minute and it worked substantially good. I put the string method on here. So next year we're going to try to replace these with four by fours and go up to about six and a half feet tall and possibly 
put some cattle panels and cross beams across the top and some cattle panels so that when the tomatoes get tall enough, they will kind of trail us over like they do. They're vines that are, I've had them grow out of my compost piles over here and produce more crawling across the ground than I get trying to pin them up. So I thought maybe if we put them up there, sorry, that they could just crawl across the top if they wanted to. And then this is our field garden. And I tried to plant corn and okra here this year, but it doesn't work out well with weeds when you have a monsoon every day for the entire summer. I feel like, honestly, I cannot remember a time in my entire life where it rained as much as it did. And I can show you a little bit of my greenhouse. We're about to set up a whole rain barrel system on the greenhouse so that we can collect water off of the sides. And the tomatoes will have a rain system set up here on the right side so that they can have a drip system running through them. This is my really extremely messy greenhouse. It needs a lot of organization. Um, we have our stove pipe so we can get our wood stove installed to keep the temperature at least at 40 this winter, hopefully. And I have a partial roof. You can see the mid whole middle section is greenhouse material, clear plastic and not plastic. Um, well, I call it plastic roofing, but I know it's not really plastic. It's like poly something other. And then again, there's the sweet potatoes that we just harvested. And I just brought my citrus in for the winter because it was starting to yellow from the cool nights we had. And I think night before last, we had a 36 degree night and it's supposed to be warm for the next week or so, but I have started bringing all of my plants that don't like it cold inside. And one telltale is your aloe vera. I have my aloe vera in here, and as long as it's green and doesn't start turning yellowy clear, then I know that the temperature is okay. Well guys, I hope you kind of enjoyed that. I know it was a rough, but like I said, this is raw and in person and this is my real life. Like I'm not trying to edit everything out and be somebody that I'm not because this is who I am. And also just have to keep on going. Like this is hard. The lifestyle is not the easiest in the world. You got to work when you don't want to work. It's hot. It's cold. It's freezing. You have things that happen with animals, you have sickness, you have everything, and you just have to keep going through it all. So, you know, hang in there, and the best thing about it is it makes you feel so peaceful. It's stressful every once in a while, but the peace that comes with having your hands in the dirt and doing your own things is way more beneficial. There's more pros than cons, in my opinion, and there's hard parts of the farm. The There's parts that I hate of the farm life, and that is like when you have deaths of babies and things like that on the farm. That's just, to me, that is one of the most excruciating things to have to go through because my heart just hurts so bad. But, you know, it's part of the job. And so I hope you guys enjoyed this little tour from the winter and I hope to get one up in the spring and the summer so you can see what we're doing and just kind of hopefully by now you're starting your own garden adventures and your own little things you can do things in urban situations with little pots like I mean the raised beds can be put anywhere and you can grow things that look ornamental that you can actually eat there are lots of things out there so Never let space be the problem of why you don't do for yourself and get more self-reliant because there are so many things you can do and so much space in your own homes that you don't even know that you can utilize. 
So join me again for another video soon and see you later. Bye.